And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we appreciate you again for counting us worthy among the living. For the grace given to us to be in your presence. It's another time to listen to your word. Holy Spirit, speak to us from above. Meet us at the point of our knees. May we never go back empty-handed as we leave your holy house. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of us to the presence of the Almighty God, the owner of our life, as we have come here this afternoon, this morning, to meet your God. It is a prayer that we meet every one of us at the point of our name before we go out. Once again, I appreciate the provost, our beloved provost of the cathedral that has given me this wonderful privilege to stand before you this time. I greet all the able assistant to the clergy the Lord you are serving will continue to equip you with fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. The theme before us this afternoon is restoring wasted years in work life and finance. As it has been taken from the Epistle read, that's Second Thessalonians chapter three, from verse six. Paul really hammered on making use of the opportunity you have. Wasted years refers to a period in an individual life where they feel they have not made progress achieve their goals or reach their full potentials. It can also be described as a period in one's life that has been spent unproductively, inefficiently, or without achieving their goals. Similarly, it refers to years that have without making progress, without making learning or growing, often due to various reasons within different circumstances. This time, however, narrowing it down in the context of work life and finance, Wasted years refers to a period where an individual's potential for growth, development, and financial progress is not fully utilized or is hindered due to various reasons. This can be as a result of the following. One, stagnant career advancement meet opportunities for skill development and learning, financial stagnation or debt accumulation, lack of purpose or fulfillment in one's career. Paul addressed these issues, emphasizing the importance of hard work. As we are here this afternoon, this message is for us, especially we younger ones. Many are not really ready to work. Many have been playing with their, with their time. Instead of using the precious time they have judiciously in study, in learn new things, they will be playing about. 
And the Yoruba says, Rada Rada ki ba wan lagba lagba. Ke kere lo ti ba wan lo. O mati o ba de ya shamu. Ke kere lo ti jenu shamu shamu lo. Whoever want to be an effective child in adult, we have to start right from his or her youthful age. Paul therefore warned these people who are not ready to work, he solicited for hard work and self sufficiency in Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 6. Furthermore, Apostle Paul admonished them as follows. He commanded the Thessalonians to withdraw from those who are idle and disobedient. In verse 6, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the tradition they receive from us. Our dear sisters, brothers here this afternoon, the same message, the same command is being given to you. Stay away from those who are not walking according to the injunction of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Yoruba says, Agutantoba Jani. What will happen to it? Agutantoba Jani, yo jegbe. Agutantoba Jani, yo jegbe. And you cannot sit. Oh, the lejo koti on a walk. Oh, my jenny be. Yeah, lejo koti on a walk. That is the sheep that really walk with a dog. We eat feces. And you cannot really sit with a forbidden thing without eating from it. So you need to be careful about the way we really behave to protect your future. Paul set an example by working hard and earning his living, as we have seen in Second Thessalonians chapter seven, chapter three, verses seven and nine. He instructs them to work and hand their daily bread rather than relying on others. If anyone will not walk, neither shall he eat, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. Paul warns against idleness, emphasizing its spiritual harm. He encourages perseverance and imitation of good example. Common causes of wasted years, lack of clear set goal or direction. In our country, Nigeria, we are praying day and night, but we are still having a lot of challenges. When we say, when you have when you are procrastinating, either individually or collectively, procrastinating or indecision due to laziness and lackadaisical behavior, it will hinder your progress. Failure to develop in demand skills, it will hinder your progress. Ignorance. Ignorance, according to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are dying, my people are perishing as a result of what? As a result of lack of knowledge. How do we really restore these wasted years? Many youth of nowadays, they are wasting their time, destroying their time without really knowing. Many will collect their school fees. Instead of going to school, they will be spending the money or roaming about, destroying their future instead of facing their learning or their study. How do we 
restore these wasted years. It's never too late. Oh, no, to cool, okay. Oh, to our source, I beg. According to our text, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6, restoration is possible if you can take these seven steps. It is possible to bring back the lost glory of your life. Acknowledging idleness. Recognize the wasted years and acknowledge the idleness in that verse 7 of the 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Returning to work. Let us learn how to work. Many prefer to be asking, requesting, soliciting for help. You see them by the roadside. Instead for them, they have able body. They have leg, complete hands, eyes, everything. Yet they were asking for arm, for help, all about. Imitating a good example, follow the example of those who work hard. Right now, look into those that are, that are your leaders. Emulate them. Imitate them. Paul said, even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. And while Lakpama Shishé, I Jeguru Dagba. Paul is also warning you, brothers and sisters, learn to walk. Seeking guidance is number four. Seek guidance from those who are walking in the ways of the Lord. As I said before, a sheep that keep company with a dog we eat feces. And a dog that moves with goats, we eat yam peas. A wure to ba jarin. A jato be wure ni. Yo je po su. Hallelujah. Starting a new. That is, you need to start a new. Start a new with a fresh commitment to living a responsible and diligent life. Making amends. Making amends. You need to start a new job like that prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 verse 18. The Bible says when he came back to his senses. We all know the story of that prodigal son. Say, I will arise and go back to my father and say unto him, my father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Just make me one of your servants. Many have lost without thinking. And what did this prodigal son did? He made a U-turn. He arose and went back to his father. What happened to him? There was a turn around for good. Brothers and sisters, if you two can take the same step, it is it is good. There will be a turnaround. That wasted years, you can still regain it. It's never too late. That wasted year, we have seen it, many of them in the Bible. What about Joseph? He was able to regain the wasted years. What about Jacob? He was able to regain the wasted years. So if, if you think, retrace your step, you can still retrace. You can still regain that wasted year. Pray for restoration. Pray for restoration and redemption of the wasted years. This can be seen throughout the, the passage of that Second Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 15. To restore wasted years in work life and finance, I can say without mincing a word that people are really praying in Nigeria 24-7. Praying every day. We are having, as I said in the morning, having Isho Osan, Isho Uru, Isho Iyaleta, Isho Idaji, praying always. But 
it seems as if there is nothing to show for it. We are moving from pillar to pole. Things are getting difficult and difficult and difficult for us every day. That means we are yet to take the rightful step. Having various vigil, various prayers, midday prayer, midnight prayers, the ravage we have been having over the years and the impact on our nation and well-being is enormous. Anytime I look into the old ways of things and where we find ourselves now, can we say, can the prices of essential commodities fall again, come down again? Can things really go back to where we were before? Brethren, what do we think? How are we in this mess? What do you think will make Nigeria recover from our present predicament? How do we restore those wasted years? He who is lost and does not know that he's lost is already a missing person. Increment. Our government are taking, our leaders are taking lots of steps. But if one looks vividly, you will observe that there is no way out yet. They have decided that during the Christian festival or Muslim festival, 25,000 to be given to everybody to cushion the effect of hardship. That cannot do. That is not the way out. They have decided that granting loans to students in the higher institution we help the situation. That is not the way out. The students that finish in the higher institution without any job, how will he pay back the loan? If there is work, it will be possible to pay back the loan. You will be, you will be deducting it from the from the salary. But there are so many students, graduates, carrying beautiful certificates all about for five years, for ten years without anything to do with it. How then will he or she be able to bring back to the, the loan, to pay the loan? Provision of food during break to students, both in from primary institution, this cannot help. This is not the way out. As I was saying in the morning, level 05, around the year 1975-1976, when you are reading in the teacher's college then, up to the midnight, our slogan then is, Sunday, go and sleep. Emmanuel, go and sleep. Don't kill yourself because of 1440. Don't kill yourself because of 1,440 naira per annum. That, is what, that was level five then. We still have a saving. You can still be your home. How much was a pack of me, Coca-Cola? How much then? Even if the salary is gone for, for half of a million, if the salary is gone for half of a million, what will you do with it? With the skyrocketing of essential commodities? At the Yoruba, we say, Bon Jebakro, the new Ishe, Ishe Bushe. That is, if the the issue of food is removed from poverty. The poverty is over. What we need to do? Brothers and sisters in the Lord. The government, we need to take, our leaders, we need to take 
proactive a step that we bring a turn around. I've been saying it. Each local government council in the federation should go on farming. Animal, husbandry, fisheries. It is a pity that we are still importing fishery from another country. Importing fishery from another country for all to eat. Food crops, cash crop. Let us go ahead. Farming, mechanized farming equipment. Mechanized agriculture as a matter of urgency. Importation of various mechanized farming equipment should be improved upon. That is like tractors, trucks, harvesters, and so on. I wept bitterly when I got to the land of Israel. The way they, call it, the way they do their own farming. We have a lot of virgin land in our land here without making use of, of them. If I have the means, I will let the God, the, tell the government, enough is enough. Jerusalem to make us sponsoring Christian to Holy Pilgrimage to Jerusalem or Muslim to Mecca should stop henceforth for another for at least for five years to put back, to restore what we have really lost. For the next five years to fix or restore our wasted years. We can use that money, can be, divide, can be diverted into another good things. It is a pity the Yoruba will say, on Taobani Je Akifi Rumu. It's not what you what, what you do not eat. Don't try to smell it. You may be tempted to take it. The Bible says, let justice roll down like waters and let us know that can never flow in stream. We have disallowed justice to roll like waters in our nation. What about kidnapping Izu? Kidnapping Izu. It's not on our own, during our own time. It, it happened in the Bible. Kidnapping Izu happened in the Bible. And when it happened in the Bible, what step did they take then? What does the Bible say about kidnapping? In Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, it says, and I quote, He who kidnaps a man or a woman and says him or her, or if he or she is found in his hand, shall surely be put to death. And also Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 7 says, if a man is found kidnapping any of his brethren of the children of Israel and mistreats him or sells him, then that kidnapper shall die and you shall put away the evil from among you. Hmm. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, why, what have we done to the kidnappers arrested so far. Unless we follow Bible in, in, injunction, we are praying, we are praying, we are fasting, but we have left undone what we ought to have, to have, to, to, to have done. Why are we keeping them? The Yoruba Sebi is The moment we fail to do the right thing, it's not that... God is not there to answer our prayer. We must see God's wisdom and pray for the assignment to understand his plan for our life. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. Have you wasted any opportunity? Have you, brothers and sisters, procrastinated on any vital decision, it is not over until it is over. 
with God's help, we can make most of the present and build a brighter future. With God, restoration is possible. Lost here is possible. If only we allow God to take over. And it shall be well with us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.